Hi guys, so um, this year I'm starting a section, a series, hopefully. I'm saying hopefully because I haven't thought about committing to it. And most of the time before I do something, I like to commit first. So uh, in this series, I want to review some of the things I've talked about that maybe I have changed my opinion on it or I've learned something that has made me reconsider stuff about it. One of the things is... This one, I don't think I've spoken about it like in depth, like my beliefs about it, except that what I believe the word says about it. But I think I want to start off with celibacy. And in this section, I'm going to involve some of the questions some people have thrown at me. I'm going to say thrown at me because these are people I know personally. So one of the things is I'm going to start with is celibacy. And my question about celibacy is, are we doing it for God or are we doing it for ourselves? And personally, these are my beliefs that I've come down to from listening to a lot of experiences of people who have faced judgment in it, people who have condemned themselves in it, and also my uh, view on it according to how I've seen people being treated because you know, in terms of it, like, let's say, this is my perspective. When people have gone through a traumatic experience and they are deprived of the choice of choosing celibacy, and then they come to a society or a faith or a religion that condemns them for not being celibate, is that right? So I think my perspective on it has changed from the experiences of looking at people who have been condemned or who have been attacked by it so personally from what i know what i've read of the word i feel like celibacy is more for ourselves than it is for god because there's even a scripture that talks about <coughs> excuse me there's a scripture that talks about that um uh, sexual sin is a sin against our own flesh and th you know, when you think about it, why is it the only sin that is talked about that is against our own flesh? And even talking about it, for me personally, and I'm saying personally because people have a lot of, uh, what is it called? They catch feelings in this topic. Something I've realized is that I have a, a lot of respect for people who have chosen to, uh, what is it called, to keep to keep, to go pro-choice in situations where they did not keep celibacy. I don't know if you're understanding me. So I think looking at all these aspects has made me reconsider a lot of things about what I've been taught about celibacy. Personally, I think celibacy, God gifted us with celibacy for our own protection, to connect with people beyond flesh, to connect with people mind-wise, spiritually, soul-wise. You get like something beyond the physical. Yeah, so that's what I believe about celibacy. If I know something new, if I'm still like researching about it, especially in the Bible, and I'm still listening to people's experiences because I feel like God speaks to us through other people's experiences also. Yeah, and if something changes about it or if I come to solid facts that I find about it, I'm going to come and we'll review it. So this is what this series is about reviewing stuff and maybe random questions in between a random question <laughs> that has been thrown at me is the most foolish thing i've done recently well i don't know why it says recently as if it's a it's a sequence of things i do most uh, foolish thing i've done recently <clears throat> okay i'm going to start off by saying i'm not a role model i'm not here to lead people into the right path or the or the right or the wrong path i'm just here to live my life and i'm hoping that you learn the right things from watching my life or from listening to stuff i talk about so with that said and with that out there the most foolish thing i've done recently is get on a speed speed bike with a handsome dude that I do not know because he was nice to me. Okay, that's an excuse. First of all, let me tell you. There's something about someone being nice. I find niceness very attractive. Like, 
I like nice people. So first of all, I'm going to just lay out the excuse right now because I know it was a foolish decision, but this, like, look at the options I had. This was a nice person. When I tell you it was a nice person, I don't know what it is about Kenyans these days. Kenyans, they're just nice people these days. Or maybe it's my experience. I'm experiencing a lot of nice people until I'm like, wow, I'm so proud of being a Kenyan, right? So, back to my foolish thing that I did recently. Yeah, this person was nice to me and I had a good day. It was a day where I had a, a great day. Let me start off with saying it was a great day. And this person had a speed bike. And I have a thing for adrenaline. So when I was offered the opportunity to run my wildest dreams on a speed bike, I said yes. This does not mean for anyone out there who still considers me a role model. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm asking you, please do not do these foolish things that I do. That is why it is called a foolish decision that I did. You know why um, the devil has access to a lot of people? It's because he's a nice person. Eh? And I know this contradicts a lot of people who say the devil is, uh, an, is like this what do I say, this wild person, but I, I feel like the people I've experienced who are evil, they just start off by being nice, with the facade of being nice. So with that said, always remember, make the right decision and follow your intuition, follow your gut. Don't do things because of the thrill of it or because someone looks nice or someone was nice to you. Always, you know... <laughs> Like, don't, don't do what I did. Like, that is why it is called a foolish thing I did recently. I will not repeat it again, so I, I pray that you do not do it even once, okay? The other thing I want to review is meditation. And I know I've spoken about meditation a lot of times. Personally, I feel like a lot of people, all of us, we are born or brought up. We are born being meditators. It is a natural trait in us. But... What I'm talking about is the lotus, my, the difference between meditation without, okay, this is what I'm going to say. For me personally, I've realized that when I do the lotus meditation, I know I've spoken against it, but sometimes I feel like if I'm thinking in terms of Jesus Christ, maybe it doesn't affect me. But this is something I've realized. Anytime I try to do the lotus meditation, there are just some weird experiences I go through after, or there are these there's this presence I feel, you know, may, this is my experience. I'm not talking about everyone. I'm talking about my experience. Anytime I do it, I just feel like I'm inviting some dark entity into my space and I have to pray or turn it off immediately. So for me personally, I'm not going through the lotus meditation because I feel like being someone who likes evidence or factual evidence of things I believe in, I feel like I've already gotten enough evidence in my experience to not do or try it again because it's just, I don't know, there's something about it that makes me feel like I'm inviting darkness because even after it, I always experience something dark and I don't know if it's because I believe that about it because as a man thinketh, so is he. Or if that's the trueness of that experience. So personally, I'm not doing the lotus meditation, whether it's in the name of God or whatever. I'm just going to, you know, think about good things and keep it moving, you know, as I've done all my life. Next one is what I hope for this year. I think what I hope for this year, like every other year, is to be what I hope for this year. What I hope for, maybe probably every other year, is to be nice, to be kind. And I've realized that kindness sometimes is being choosing yourself and choosing peace and choosing God. And I think what it means to me, I'm saying to me, I'm going to, this video is going to be a lot about me. Hmm? Everything is going to start with me. We are going to be selfish like that. What I've realized about being niceness is that there is a limit to being nice. And I'm not saying being be evil because you cannot be nice in certain spaces. I'm just saying that choose where you are kind at. Because sometimes, personally, there are 
people I do not befriend because if I realize you do not have a respect for boundaries, I feel like befriending you is like every time I smile at you, it's like saying, yes, you can cross my boundaries. So yeah, I choose who I associate I who I associate with uh, exclusively because of that factor. That factors in into people I allow into my space, people I call friends and people I call family. is because of the factor of if you respect boundaries, I want to be close to you because then I know that my smile does not come at a cost of you crossing my boundaries. So when I say that be kinder this year, that is what I mean. I mean be kind in spaces where my boundaries are not being crossed. The next one I'm going to talk about a realization that I've spoken about in this video also is about one of the things I'm most proud of that I've realized is that I love being a Kenyan. And the realization that I've seen or I've experienced a lot of people, people are nice in Kenya, guys. Like, I've experienced things until I'm like, huh? Are people actually doing this for everyone or is Jesus just giving me a gift card, you know? You know when you have a gift card and you don't have to pay for anything, you just go with a gift card and you get anything you want. I feel like, what? Until it's like, do I have to pinch myself? Am I dreaming or is this real life? So I've realized that Kenyans are nice people. Wow. I know they are bad people, but I'm telling you the people I've experienced personally that I'm experiencing. I don't know if it is God. Jesus is just walking with me. So when I walk, people are seeing the Jesus. Like people are nice. People are, wow, I'm so proud to be. For the first time, I'm Kenya. I'm proud to be a Kenyan. I love it. Um, What else do we talk about? Something we reveal. Uh, thoughts becoming things. This is something I've also realized. If you believe that your bad moment influences every other good thing in your life, that is what will become. Uh, to explain this better, this is what I realized. It's okay to talk about a bad experience. Because if you say that you cannot talk about bad experiences because you are drawing them into reality, it's like saying you cannot do therapy because if you talk about your tra traumatic experiences, you're going to reenact them into happening again. I think it is okay. God has given us the space to talk about bad stuff, but also don't dwell on the bad stuff. Like, move on from the bad stuff. You know, forgive faster. Don't live in grudges. Don't be bawatu. I know that, like... For me personally, I feel like I've had situations where I'm not even mad at people, but I have to act like I'm mad at people because I don't want them to cross my boundaries. So <laughs> when I say don't carry grudges, personally, honestly, before God, I believe in that. Don't carry grudges because any negative energy you carry around you, it will influence your life. Like you don't need to allow negative spaces outside you to affect the peace inside you because the peace inside you manifests good things towards you and i know this has been said by a lot of people from a lot of you know background of it whether right or wrong but that is the truth the next thing i want to review is not review but you know talk about is that the principle of life that people ignore and maybe i should Maybe I should make a video about it, but why not talk about it when we are here? Because sometimes making these promises about coming back is very... Creating a video, I'm telling you, sometimes it's too hectic. It takes a lot. So, talking about the principles of life, this is what I've come to realize. Whether you are a Christian, whatever faith you are of, or even if you do not believe in a faith, this is a fact of life. There are principles in life that you cannot defy, not through your faith, not through your talk. It's just the way, it's like gravity. Gravity does not choose who believes in God and who doesn't believe in God. It happens to all of us. So one of the principles of life I've realized is that if you walk in life with good intentions, God finds a way to bring good intentions right back to you. They manifest to you. The other thing is that I believe is that the principle of life is is that if you wish evil on other people evil will also come right back to you 
if you cross boundaries uh, against other people, your own boundaries will be crossed. Uh, the other principle I've realized is that you can talk about knowledge, but if you are not about knowledge, those are two completely different things and it will not work for you because people are born wise. People are born with a lot of uh, wise information, but not people. a lot of people don't know how to put that wisdom into play. So people think that when you talk nice, and I'm saying talk nice by people who preach wine and drink water, people who drink who preach water and drink wine. That is the what I'm trying to say. You cannot talk about being good and tell people about being good when you yourself you are not good. You understand that is what I'm saying. So like if you believe something, if you're speaking about something, you have to be about it. You have to be the that is the way you walk and talk and live and breathe. That's what I mean. The other principle I believe about life, and I know this one is contradicting, especially in the Christian community where faith has been used to manipulate people out of their cash. But this is something I believe, whether you're born again or not, giving gives you the power to access provision. Like if you are a giver, no matter how small your giving is, and I, I'm saying how small your giving is, if that is what your standard that is where that is what you can afford no like if you are a giver things find their way into your life like you find provision in supernatural ways whether you believe in it or not you will find yourself if you are a giver things just come to you like god finds a way to bless you for me i believe in jesus christ so i will speak about god a lot I believe that that is one of the principles of life. These are principles of life that you cannot defy, whether you believe in it or not. Another principle of life is karma. People believe in karma. Me, I believe in God's vengeance. Like, God's vengeance, people always think that if you're of God, that is when God avenges you. I believe that if you take advantage of people, there is a force that has been, or a law that has been placed in the atmosphere of life that if you take advantage of people, you will be taken advantage of and it will, you will be taken advantage of in the places that hurt most. If that is your intention, if that is what you walk around with, that is what will hurt you. Uh, another thing is, I believe, I don't know if this is a review or a belief, let's just call it a random chat is therapy. I believe people should go into therapy, into counseling because, wow, like the things you will realize about your life, the way you will look at people, the place of understanding that it gives you. Sometimes you will even be angry in a situation and then it hits you like an information you got from therapy or from counseling or from just a deep talk or a deep conversation you had with someone, you realize, why am I holding on to this anger? This person comes from this place. This is their experience of life, and this is how they're expressing it. So, yeah, like, you know, like deal with stuff in your life. You know, if you find that something keeps recurring, find a way to deal with it outside yourself, not you finding the cure. You cannot be the ill person and the doctor at the same time. If you're a sick person, you need to find a doctor for it. The other thing I've realized in life um, that I also want to be much better at is the principle of being the safe space where people can come to. If you're a safe space for other people, you other people become a safe space for you. If you protect people's secrets, people's uh, vulnerab vul yo, vulnerabilities, you as also are protected. And I'm not saying that bad stuff will not happen to you because obviously even the word of God says we be trained uh, like a weak person in weakness is indeed a weak person. So I'm just saying like be aware of this stuff. Be aware that when you're a safe space, it comes back to you. It might not come back to you consecutively or consistently, but it will happen to you. Uh, the other thing is being grateful. The power of being grateful, I've realized, is that it makes you see 
what you have been gifted with that you can use to empower yourself, to empower the people around you. It also makes you, I don't know, there's something about gratitude that expands your opportunities, that expands your experiences, and that expands your joy. You know, like, you know, <laughs> this is going to be contradictory, but I don't know in life if someone has ever attained the climax of happiness but i find that there is a way to live with joy there is a climax of joy like there is a way you can be you know joyful is being happy despite what is going on in your life so i find that you know if you walk around with good intentions you walk around being connected to a higher power for me the higher power is god jesus christ if you live life from a place of gratitude there is just an atmosphere a supernatural atmosphere of goodness and kindness that follows you yeah and yeah the next one is okay i think i've gone through all of them and i've spoken about most there so yeah that was a random one and happy 2023 i know i haven't have i even yeah maybe you're seeing things too late because <laughs> editing people is not easy but it's not an excuse i'm getting on to it and yeah i'm going to try and be better actually i'm going to try and edit as soon as i record a video because the reason why i have a lot of things that i cannot post is because i've posted i've recorded so much but i haven't edited all of them and life is busy like i have a lot of things to do like even now i've just found spare time you know like to create this because if i keep postponing i will never create something because something always comes up like life we have to live life like social media is not our entire life there is a lot going on in our personal lives that we do not put on display or that we do not talk about so committing like a hundred percent of our time onto social media is not realistic and i think it's unfair to expect that of anyone who is a creative because creating is also like work it's like you going to work i know some people some people will catch feelings when i say this because people find it personal but i want you to like you know if you feel so strongly about uh people who create like we are just lacking i want you to try for a month and create and hopefully you become you know you start off your channel but you'll see it's not as easy as it looks sometimes it looks like you're just recording and posting it but a lot goes on behind sometimes you can't come on here looking a certain way Personally, you can come looking however way you want to because I've chosen to live a free life and cancel culture cannot cancel me because God has not canceled me, okay? <laughs> Story for another day. Okay, uh, a gem I've discovered this year. Is it this year? Yeah. Okay, well, not exactly this year, but we are just going to put it like a 2023 gem is that I've discovered uh, two podcasts that really are really inspiring mike tyson my god huh oh i know i always speak about it dejects as wisdom but you need to put mike tyson as we won't put him number two we'll put him on the same lane as their tdjx the way i value like those people are so wise people another one is angie martinez by the way, I'm giving you this gem so that you can check them out because I want to have a platform where people can have intelligent conversations. You know, there is nothing as sexy as an intelligent conversation. You know, when people just, there is nothing as horrible, you know, like looking at someone from a distance and they're attractive and then they open their mouth and then you're like, oh my God, Jesus Christ, let me run for the hills. So I'm um, inspiring you to get into this intelligent conversational podcasts so that you can sharpen yourself and so that you can have intelligent conversations and so that your sexy can really be truly sexy you know when you open your mouth people say